Biden 94. Welcome back to the library. I am the recorder, and in this entry we expand a bit more on the history and timeline of the realms, going a little more in depth and hopefully clarifying some points that may have been unclear in earlier entries. Perceptive patrons and newer guests of the library are warned that this will not be an exhaustive accounting of the ages or the events that occurred within them. And this, as all entries, is just an introduction. With that out of the way, let us begin this brief look at the timeline of the realms. In the beginning, we have the Age of Elders, and with it the creation of both dragons and Analar, the original gods as well as the created races of those gods. This would include the Elves, Dwarves, Halflings, and Gnomes. The Flameforged humans also find their genesis in this age, but were not discovered until the next age. This nebulous period of time lasted somewhere between 1 and 3,000 years, with time being established near the end of the age as a constant concept. The Age of Ascension sees the growth and expansion of the races, their interactions and conflicts with the various evolving and emerging savage and wild races, and the establishment of the first cities and soon after states for the various peoples to begin trade and travel to and from. Early in the age, the flame-forged humans were discovered and welcomed into the growing international community of civilized peoples. Great magical, artistic, scientific, and other works and discoveries were made in this long, golden age. It was in this period the first of the expedition ships were set to explore the stars, recorded as lasting some 4,865 years, the Age of Ascension is the longest of the ages so far and is often seen as a lost era of mystery and innocence. However, like all golden ages, the terrible thing that is war brought it to an end. The first war of feather and scale is a strange thing to look at historically, as for the younger races, very little noticeable besides the absence of the Anilar and dragons really occurred for the bulk of the 1080 year conflict. However, for the Elders, the war saw the death of two firsts, the full martial realignment of their cultures, the creation of weapons of such destructive power that they still pose a threat to this very day. Lacking the oversight and guidance of the Elder Races, the younger races merely kept along the paths they were already on, exploring, learning, and growing. Only in the last 80 years or so of the conflict were the younger races impacted, as battles began to occur in mostly remote locations on Jamamar herself, rather than high in the skies above or in other planes of reality altogether. During this and the next brief snippet of time, actions were being taken to remove the powers of the celestial elements from Jamamar herself. For 90 years after the official end of the First War, the Great Work was an effort amongst the Elders to, according to the rhetoric, bring unity and peace to the Elders and all of Jamamar. In reality, it was an effort to excise the true threat to the warring faction's ability to see their own side find final victory. The threat of the revered those firsts that had discovered not only how to conjoin their natural gifts with a member of the other's race, but to become even more powerful and mighty because of it. The Revered had opposed the war in the first place and were only stopped from direct intervention by the declaration of the Great Works beginning. Even though steps had been taken in the last years of the war to prepare for this event. The culmination of the work saw the moons Epaka and Givain vanish from the skies. 
The island that the revered had made their home was similarly excised from the world. It is unknown whether the revered were just caught unawares by this, or if they allowed events to unfold for their own reasons, or perhaps their understanding of fate. It is also notable that the very few examples of Temporsis, Athenite, and Boitasa were also lost during this event, and the corresponding Christs were no longer noted as being found. Also, many of the more war and conflict geared creations of the Elders disappeared as well. This perhaps is a preemptive strike to weaken one another for the coming war. As this was most definitely not the stated aim of the great work, the unaware populace of both sides at first demanded answers, then quickly to demands for retribution as each blamed the other for acting in bad faith. So of course, the second war of feather and scale began, and the effect of the great work echoing far beyond the elders, the younger races soon found themselves intimately involved. This expanded the war to cover most of Jamamar at one point or the other. Cities and states would find themselves a point of conflict or contention for days, weeks, or even months, having to choose a side and fight it out, only to see nothing else happen for decades before having to repeat the experience, perhaps even on the other side due to whatever vague reasons dictated a different alignment in this case. For 2,128 years, the world knew war. Empires rose and fell, and no winner was in sight. The younger races began building great defensive structures for their people to weather the ravages of active conflict, and the great powers slowly became more focused on local and regional affairs, as it was becoming prohibitively costly to try to maintain logistical chains of any length during the conflict, and the rise of the strange drag wah threat on the oceans only added to this confusion compounded more so by the appearance of the Necrotai, who were seemingly at war with them. Of course, this all came to an end with the summoning of the Daemon Vanson, and his reign of terror. As has been said before, the length and duration of the reign is morphic and in constant flux. The beginning of the reign saw Jamamar and the entire star system of Cradellus vanish from the skies of all the colonies as well as from the censors of the Expedus fleet. And this disconnect still endures on some of those worlds to this day, still awaiting contact from a Jamamar that is like ancient myth. The devastation set almost every race and civilization back to a level, arguably below that of when they were first introduced to the world. With Vanson's defeat by the three great heroes, we have the beginning of the Age of Mortals, lasting 3,193 years. We see the direct aftermath of the reign with the cursing of the Deep Folk those elves and their dwarven allies that had committed great atrocities against their own during the rain. After being cursed, they fled into the deeps and other parts unknown. The kingdoms and powers that would endure to this day reestablished themselves, with the unnoted exception of the Flameforged unnoticed because it seems that the entire world had forgotten there had ever been a kingdom of the Flameforge, or what the Blue Flame even was. This being a lasting scar from the daemon that would not be righted for ages. However, in the waning years of the age, dark rumblings and beings began to stir 
and the agents of the daemon began to work towards his return. In the conflict that brought those particular aims to an end, a group of mortal heroes had been rewarded with divine status and been given the duty of defending Jamamar and all of her peoples and lands from Vansen and any other that might seek to destroy or harm them. This is the beginning of the Age of Valor as the Valors, who had just been given their new duties and powers set forth to both advance the peoples of the world, as well as to stay on watch for the Daemon's return. And three more times did the Daemon try, and three more mortal groups, aided by those that came before them, bested him. The Voids, the Victors, and finally, the Vanquishers eventually shattered and ended the threat of the Daemon's return for all time. Over the 3600 years of the age, Jamamar was spurned onto acts of development and recovery unparalleled so far within the history of the world, with many great and lost arts rediscovered. The Moon's return and the powers of the celestial elements flowing into the world once more. However, this was not to last, as with the coming of the new and clearly powerful mortal gods, the old gods, who had not been known to have looked favorably on the casual way these young upstarts chose to interact with their subjects and charges felt it was time to remind them of the pecking order and who had come first. Over the next 503 years, most of the old gods died in what is known as the War of the Spark. A few of the mortal gods or their children also met a similar fate, but the losses were in no way equal. As the dust settled and the instigation for the war was discovered and summarily dealt with, the mortal gods stood as the preeminent divine power in the world and announced that no more war between the divine of Jamamar would ever occur. To this end, the court of the gods was established with Her Majesty Genevieve as matriarch and the gods handed title, responsibility, and rules of conduct by the court. With the realms of the divine at peace and their followers likewise, we see the age of respite and restoration begin, lasting 1,900 and 99 years, we see a further growth of the peoples of the world and their desire to reclaim all the lost knowledge and treasures of the world continue as if the War of the Spark had never happened. The Isle of the Rebeard, the Necrotai, and the Blue Flame itself are rediscovered, as is the seat of Flameforge Dominion with the return of Emperor Price and the previous rediscovery of Domnitra. New powers rise and an international council is formed and codified, laying the cultural and legal framework for future growth and expansion. The discovery of the Expedus Primus and the news of star travel, along with the possibility of lost colonies and new adventures, followed quickly by the Sky Tear incident, brings us to the current Age of Stars. Currently in its 2367th year. Early in the age, a war and eventual alliance with the ancient empire occurred over the course of four or five years. The Teltekians were also discovered in the earlier age in its later years, but truly began to come into their own in the Age of Stars having had the time to rebuild their culture. 
The full Expedus fleet has been recovered and expanded from the four original ships, being the Primus, Draxus, Celestial, and Menorahs, to include the Endeavor, the Teltechians offering to the fleet, as well as the Enlightened Race's vessel, aptly named the Enlightenment, as well as the ship of the Crafted Races, the Sentience. And this is where we find ourselves, both in the tale and at the end of this entry. I want to thank each and every one of you for your time and your interest, my perceptive patrons. Thank you. I have been the recorder, and until you next find your way back to the library for another entry, by the nine and four, be well, take care of yourselves and each other. <laughs>